On the phone with us before the press conference was Howard Gutman, who was the former ambassador to Belgium. We're going to bring him back to talk about what's happening there uh, in Belgium. Now, Ambassador, you heard this press conference. You heard them saying that the terror alert was heightened to a level four, that they were hit blind. But then they also said that they did fear that this day could come. What are your, your folks and your intelligence there on the ground saying? Did anyone tip you off to, to this? And have you gotten any information? Because you were talking about the security guards that had protected you when you were the ambassador, that they were walking around with Uzis. Did they say anything to you? Right. So um, as of last night, it was um, the situation was normal. But you got to remember, the, it's the new normal. So on my block, there were always uh, four Uzi guards in front of uh, the American ambassador's residence, which is about 100 yards to my left. And there's several Uzi guards to the parliament, which is about 20 yards to my right normally. Um, but it seemed like the new normal that existed for a long time. So this took them blind. Uh, but what they did is they quickly reacted. By the time, you know, I heard about it, or I basically heard sirens going everywhere into my house, there were already two Army trucks on my corner. And what's interesting, though, for me is that the force that normally, there's 80 Belgian Surete. They are the people who would guard visiting dignitaries. You know, four of them will be, at, or three of them will be each day with the U.S. Ambassador of NATO, the U.S. Ambassador of the EU, uh, and the US, U.S. Ambassador of Belgium. So they have all of the surete in and then standing on corners with Uzi. That means anybody from the military to the police to the security force was relatively quickly deployed to downtown Belgium. Uh, again, now, uh, I'm on the block with the parliament, um, but, um, and they quickly, well, they, you know, normally you had people just walking around and you did for hours, and then they asked people right. to move uh, and then sorted it out. Howard, I, I, can I ask you, too, the logistics of this? So we understand there's been two blasts. You have uh, one at the airport. The other side is the uh, train station, the metro station. How close are they together? How dense are the crowds usually at this hour? Right. So the, at, the, at the airport, that is where you kind of, uh, you know, arrive and you check in. It's, it's the basic check-in point. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that would be international people leaving, coming, and it would be, very crowded. I, you hear different reports, but I've heard there were explosive devices at several different uh, Belgian um, metro lines, subway lines. Two different um, metro uh, blasts at Schumann and Mailbeck stations, Howard. Right. So that means that is, it, it, that is they had coordinated teams time-wise at different locations to send messages. And I can tell you, if this were the regular people from from um, from Molenbeek, if this was Absalom's, you know, best eight friends, they would not be picking Schumann. Schumann is the, the stop at the EU. This is, if you were an international person thinking about where are the, the sites in the world to send a message, you would pick Schumann. That is the heart of the EU, but that is nowhere near Molenbeek, which, by the way, is where I am right now as we head towards Ghent. We are now driving through Molenbeek, and it is quiet on the streets of Molenbeek. Um, uh, Schumann is, uh, you know, is, is about a mile and a half away, and that is the, the home of the EU. And that's if you were sitting somewhere abroad and said, okay, the world's looking at Brussels, we're going to strike there, and you want to pick key targets. Um, you know, it's the difference between uh, an attack in a neighborhood in the Bronx and going to the... Right. To the heart of Times Square in Washington, this would be at the Capitol. Sure, you know, Howard. If, the I, if I, if the ambassador, if I wanted to get on a train at Moenbeck or Schumann, uh, what kind of security would I have to go through? Well, normally it's just the metro, and there would be none. Right. So, it, it is rush hour. You know, it's a normal metro system. It's the same you'd go through at the metro in DC or the or the subway in New York. Uh, would be normally. Right now, all the trains are closed. The all the metros are closed. The train stations are closed. The roads are not doing well, right. um, and the phone signals, I'm amazed we've stayed because I keep getting um, blasts that the, the, the phone lines are down. This is the wonders of Skype because that's the only way I could get through. I couldn't get through right. the bell. You know, wow. Ambassador, um, when, when we were here in New York during 9-11, I actually wasn't living here at the time, but I had friends living here. I was trying to call them to make sure they were okay and safe. I'm sure you're getting a lot of calls this morning. Tell us a little bit about that from a personal level. So, the, you know, I have had emails and Facebook posts, but I quickly posted that it's going to be easier to get me by listening to Fox than it will by getting me. But there is the Facebook um, security system. So 
you're able now, you get a blast on your phone saying, are you safe? Please respond. Mm -hmm. And then you click in that you're safe. But the problem is you get a notification and a pop-up when everyone says they're safe. So I can tell you lots of people are safe because I keep getting a pop-up saying I am safe from X, but I don't know who's not safe. So I'm not sure it's the best system. Facebook might need to fine-tune me a little bit. Howard Gutman, stick right there. Uh, we uh, appreciate the insight as you have scrambled to get us your sound so we understand, your signal so we understand exactly what's going around uh, in Belgium where they've been hit by a series of terror attacks this morning which we're still trying to unwind at this hour.